As well, personal care seeing sales rise over 4% in the first quarter with strong international performance offsetting a sticky consumer backdrop. The owner of Schick and Banana Boat did, however, see profits slip from a year ago. Dan Sullivan, who's the Edgewell Personal Care CFO, joins us now. Always a pleasure to catch up with you here. First and foremost, we got to know what were some of the largest catalysts for this quarter, and does that trend remain true from your perspective for the rest of the year? Yeah, good morning, Brad. Thank you. Great to be here. Look, we had a good start to the year. We delivered about 3% organic growth. As you mentioned, we saw heightened growth internationally, double digit growth. Uh, share performance was solid across the U.S. We gained share in key markets like Germany and Japan. And I think most importantly, we saw a real catalyst in the, in the quarter around our uh, gross margin profile, 200 basis points of year over year gains, which certainly bodes well for the year. In terms of growth, I think what, what we are seeing right now is really strong brands on shelf, good distribution outcomes, some interesting innovation that's now making its way to the consumer. And in certain markets, mostly internationally, we continue to take price. Japan is a great example of that as the market leader. Um, so all of that does bode well. We, we have a guide out for the year of 2 to 4% uh, growth at the top. And so Q1 slides in quite nicely into that outlook. Dan, you mentioned the uh, better than expected uh, improvement that you saw in gross margin. I'm curious, what do you attribute that to? What are some of the changes or strategies that you have implemented in order to increase that and better position the business? Yeah, we saw great execution from the team on both sides. On, on the cost side of the house, we have a program called uh, Project Productivity, which delivered meaningful uh, cost savings uh, for the organization, north of 300 basis points of, of cost takeout. We also saw revenue gains, about 200 basis points. That's pricing, but that's also what we call strategic revenue management, right? So how do we think about interesting innovation? How do we think about promotions, um, contracts with retailers? And so all of that, the team executed extremely well on. It was a bit of an outlier. It was stronger than we thought it would be, um, but both of those led to the strong margin profile. What type of resilience do you see in, in self-care? And, and particularly, I think I, you know, I think about my own activities here, Dan, and I'm just going to make it personal. My own self-care Sundays or self-care Saturdays that I have, you know, I, I, there's a lot of your products, perhaps, that many other people out there, they might lean into the same way that I do. When you think about the resiliency of little luxuries that people might tap into if they don't feel as confident making big ticket purchases, how does that bode for Edgewell and, and where is that showing up within some of your segments? Yeah, look, consumers want simplicity, right? Particularly male consumers. They want simplicity in the regimen. They want products that can solve multiple uh, hygiene uh, challenges and, and regimen challenges for them. Uh, you see that in categories like shave, which are now moving more into a hair removal play. We've brought dermaplaning on the female side of the equation as a, as a good example of that. As women haven't gone back necessarily to the behaviors pre-COVID where it was spa based uh, and doing much more at home. I think most interestingly on the consumer side, though, what we see is a consumer that continues to spend on themselves, continues to search for interesting experiences for themselves. That bodes well for travel, beach, being out in the sun, being out with friends. That behavior is still there. We saw a spike post COVID. That behavior remains and certainly as the leading sun care portfolio in the U.S. bodes well for us heading into the season. Dan, have you seen at all, though, consumers trading down in terms of your products and the more affordable uh, lineup that you have at Edgewell? Are you seeing a little bit more traction there? We, we've not. We, we, we don't see any real signs in our category. And in Shave, we, we would see it, Shauna, because we, we operate across all three sub-segments, right? Branded, disposable, and private label. And if you look at consumption patterns, behavior, you're not seeing any, any real shift in terms of the last 12 to 18 months. That's why we say I think the, the consumer is resilient. We're also operating in categories that are certainly not discretionary in nature. And so we benefit from that. We're also mid, mid priced in terms of uh, mid tiered in terms of pricing, which, which also helps as well. Dan, I, I think we spoke with you about this last time as well, and we'd just love to get an update on this front. I mean, when we think about the different retail operations that your products go into, are, are you seeing any friction where there are some of those retail locations where there's, you know, plastic glass and you've got to wait for an associate to come over and get some help? I mean, I know in my own cases, that there's at least been a few occasions where I've said, you know, I don't have the time for this. I'm just going to come back or, you know, you miss out on a purchase from me. 
Yeah, look, it's real, right? What, what you all see and hear in terms of theft and shrink at retail and the challenges that retailers have uh, to protect product while not uh, disturbing sales, that, that's a real challenge. It hasn't necessarily impacted our categories per se. We're obviously at very different price points than some of the things that retailers might be uh, more interested in protecting on shelf. We've also seen a pretty healthy balance in, in online sales. The Billy brand obviously is a catalyst for that. So we also see a consumer that is now more open in our categories to buying online and in store. Dan, a lot of people already know the brands that lie underneath of Edgewell. Is there another brand out there that, that is attractive in, in sort of a, an acquisitive mindset that you think needs to be added in, or at least a segment that looks attractive for Edgewell to buy into? Yeah, look, we, we've made some really interesting acquisitions, Billy being the most recent, and hopefully you saw the news earlier this week as that brand now moves outside of Shave and into uh, women's lifestyle and body. Um, we've made acquisitions with the Cromo brand and Bulldog. We are not necessarily prioritizing acquisition at this point. Uh, we look at a lot of assets. We look at a lot of brands uh, around skin, grooming, and sun. The cost is still high, and I think most importantly, we feel really good about the portfolio we have. We don't see any needs from a portfolio perspective. Again, we're gonna stay active, we're gonna stay involved, but nothing imminent. Man, I've been pronouncing Cromo wrong this entire time. So thank you for that, Dan. I appreciate it. Dan Sullivan, Edgewell Personal Care CFO. Thank you. Thank you.